You're now live, Chair. Hello and uh, welcome back. Um, I will just run through the order of business again to those who are joining us today. Um, first of all, the licensing officer um, will give his report. This is about the, it hasn't been written about. This is the agenda item number four, Highland Express. First of all, the licensing officer will present the report. The members and then the applicant or his solicitor and those that have made representations may then ask questions of the licensing officer in that order. The applicant will then present their case and questions may be asked by all parties of the applicant. There is then an opportunity for those who have made representations to speak. Um, we have one confirmed person, um, this is uh, Dawn Staker, who's in attendance for us today. Finally, um, everyone will have the opportunity to sum up their case, starting with those that have made representations, then to the licensing officer and then to the applicant. The meeting will then end. Members will then meet privately for deliberations and when we reach our decision, it will be to circulate it to all parties as soon as possible. To reiterate, each party will have an opportunity to ask questions at the appropriate time and make their own representation when asked to do so. Excuse me. Parties are reminded that representations are strictly limited to those points already raised in your retrospective written representation. You are able to expand upon those points, but you are unable to add new. You can be assured that members have read the papers before, and as a result, you are not asked to simply read your written representation. I would now like the councillors to reintroduce themselves. I am Councillor Claire Yuki, and I'm chairing this. I'm chair of chair, licensing committee, and I'm chairing this meeting. I will read your names out in alphabetical order. Please, can you reply by stating your name and saying present? I will pause for a few seconds before calling each member. I call Councillor Leo Madden. I've not got my teams open, so I can't see if you've got them. Right. Councillor Leo Madden, present. Oh. Sorry, I, I was muted, sorry. That's <laughs> fine. Councillor Lee, Lee Mason. Right. I did just about hear you then. Councillor yeah. Lee Mason uh, present. Thank you. Yes, friends. Oh, is it? Is he still here? You still here, Leo? Yeah, I'm here, but I can't I, I can't hear Lee. <laughs> you're, all, you're all frozen now. You're frozen to us. Um, Lee, could you just say something so Leo can hear you? Can you hear me, Leo? Yes. Right then. I think, I'll go, I think I'll go on the phone. Okay. Did you want us to wait for a second? No, 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 no. You carry on. Okay. I now ask the officers to confirm that they are present as follows. Uh, ben Atrell, legal advisor. Yes, present. Thank you. Uh, Derek Stone, principal licensing officer. Oh. I think Rocky's disappeared momentarily. I think he's on mute. Ah, uh, his picture's not on either. Rocky. <laughs> well, we'll give that a second. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes, but I can't see you, but that's fine. As long as we can hear you, that's, it's quite okay. Okay, you, you keep dropping in and out, all of you, so just bear with me if I'm a bit delayed in answering. Okay. I Leo, Leo Madden. I've got problems as well with my computer keeps trying to restart to finish and installing. <laughs> program done. So if I disappear, it's not me deliberately. Leo, could you mute your phone? Hello? Oh. We, we've got you twice, Leo. I can't, sorry, sorry, I don't... I have no idea. Hello? We can hear you, Leo, but there's a raging ah. feedback. Yeah, I can't, I, I can't turn my laptop off. It's frozen. Just close the lid, just close the lid. I've done that. Oh. <laughs> I apologise for the mistake. Oh, this is, this it's is not this normally. This is of <laughs> We've done so well today so far. We can do it. We can go. 
We'll just wait for Leo to adjust. I'm taking the microphone. I'm taking the laptop out of the room. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> um, okay. Thank you. That's much better, Leah. Uh, Miss, Mrs. or Ms. Staker, could I ask that you uh, put the call on mute so we don't hear you at the other side? Is that all right? Sorry, me, Dawn yeah. Staker. Yeah. Sorry, you must have heard, heard me laughing then. No, no, it's fine. I, I agree, it's <laughs> quite humorous when that happens in the meeting, but yeah, we'll just turn off for the future. Thank you. Fine, no problem. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, did, so, Robin, we were at the point where I was asking for Derek Stone. Are you still in and out, or are you there? Uh, it's still intermittent. I'm trying to get through on my phone as well, so... Chair, I wonder if we just, just, if we just have a couple just of minutes yeah. to let everybody sort themselves out, yeah. perhaps? Yeah, that's fine. I'm just going to mute myself for two, three minutes. Thank you. Turn out, Mark. Turn off video for better quality. Did it work, Michael? Leo, you're there, but you need to put yourself on mute, please. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Are you able to mute yourself? Sorry, Councillor Madden, we're meeting. Sorry, what? Sorry, what? Could you, could you mute yourself? Um, we're just waiting on uh, Derek Stone to come back into the meeting because he's having some connectivity issues, but it shouldn't be too long. Is now joining. Hello, Derek. Is that you? I'm here now, yeah. All right, cool. Brilliant. Everyone can hear him loud and clear. Um, you're right there, Lee. Uh, Councillor Madden. Yep. <laughs> we just had a good view of your bookshelf then. That was all. Cool. Right, I can proceed now because we're all here, aren't we? So I'll just start again. I, can I now ask, please ask the officers to confirm that they are present as follows. Ben Actual, legal advisor. Yes, I'm present. Thank you. Sorry, I just lost my script. Derek Stone, principal licensing officer. Oh, oh, yes, I'm present. Thank you. Joanne Wildsmith, local democracy officer. Yes, John Wildsmith present. Thank you. I will now ask the following if they are present. Mr. John Walsgrove, solicitor for the applicant. Present. 
Um, is the applicant here, Mr. Horsgrove? Mr. I'd say Mr. Kumar that's written down on my thing. Yes, present. Oh, hello. Hello. One representative come in. Uh, so is Dawn Staker, are you present? Yes, Dawn Staker's present. Thank you very much. Um, so now we move to the report from Mr Stone, Principal Licensing Officer. Um, over to you, thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, members. So this hearing is in relation to an application for the grant of premises license for the Highland Road Convenience Store, 121 Highland Road. Members, you have my report before you, so I'll not go through that in detail. The applicant, uh, Kumar, has applied for off-sale permission of alcohol sales from the premises with both opening and off sales from 0 September hours to midnight 23.59. The applicant complied with the necessary provisions contained within Part 3 of the Licensing Act 2003 by way of public interest notification and local ward councillors were also notified. The applicant has detailed in the operating schedule the steps they intend to support, the, uh, support and promote the licensing objectives. There were no objections from any of the responsible authorities there were, however, uh, representations from some local residents. In total, we had 11 representations. Nine of those were names appended to a petition. And only two I received um, res res responses from indicating that they wouldn't be able to attend the hearing today, but they've sent in an additional bit of information which you have had sight of, and that was from Mrs. Warren and Mrs. Jones. Members, you're required to determine their application um, based on the written representation and what you hear today. I have listed in my report at paragraph five what you must have regard to, the first and foremost doing the promotion of the full licensing objective. Members, you know about uh, the EU um, provisions within the Act under paragraphs 11.1 and 11.2, which um, if there are issues, if it is likely to be granted, then we can go down the route of a review if there are any problems as a result of granting that license. Members, I don't propose to say any more at this stage, but I am available if you have any questions as the hearing unfolds. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Stone. Um, uh, any questions from members, please? Uh, Councillor Madden. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for that. Uh, Presentation again. Questions I've asked before, but the, you say in the report, obviously clearly, it's well advertised that they would not be on ground, they would not be ground for refusing this application because we've a lot of people actually reply as objectives. Is that correct? Well, I missed the question, Councillor Madden. Can you say again? Sorry. Well, well, if you, it's it's. Uh, it's, it's background information, public notice has been given, so there are no grounds to refuse the application on the fact that we've had, we've done what we had to do in advising people of this application. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. Can I go again uh, and four? Uh, no representations have been made, again from the police, again from environmental health, uh, from public health or whatever. Um, in, in, in support or indeed or in objection to this application. Um, is that important? Um, well, it's good news in as much as the responsible authorities don't have any concerns in relation to the application, if that helps. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mason, do you have any questions? No, I do not have any questions, Eva. Um, we'll move on to the applicant or solicitor for the applicant, I guess, at this stage. Uh, Mr. Walsgrove, thank you. Oh, sorry, just to represent, sorry, I forgot to ask. Just, uh, Dawn, do, Dawn Staker, do you have any questions of the report, please? Um, yes, I do. Okay. I didn't yeah, I didn't realise that you'd had no feedback from the police or environmental health. Now, I am the resident that actually lives um, to the yeah. side. We and have that above. Yeah. yeah, and above. Please, can you tell me then, in environmental health, how, um, what are their means of, of removing their rubbish 
and of their emergency access at the rear of the property. I think that will be covered. Um, I guess you can ask that of the applicant solicitor instead at this stage. I know he would have a lot more information than um, uh, our licensing officer at this point. Also, it may be a planning matter. Um, it will well, almost definitely be a planning matter when it comes to rubbish refuge, doesn't it? I'm waiting for Ben to nod at me. Um, but um, uh, that question would be suited for Mr. Walsgrove, if that's possible, or the applicant himself. So um, we'll go on to the applicant's case and um, you can ask again then, if that's OK. OK, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr. Walsgrove, would you like to start your report, please? Just formally to confirm, I didn't have any questions for Mr. Stone, so I'll just Sorry, launch straight. No, 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 it's fine. <laughs> but I thought for the record, I'll just say that. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, so in terms of the presentation, this is an application for the grant of the premises license for consumption off the premises. It's essentially for a small convenience store um, at this location. Uh, I'm advised by the client that uh, if you grant the license um, today or, or over the course of the next couple of days, if it takes that long to make the decision, then he would fit out the shop and it would be six to eight weeks before it opens to the public. Um, obviously, it's a, a substantial investment by him to purchase the lease and then also to fit out the shop. Um, the, the premises, the commercial property has been empty for a while. Um, it, with him going in and opening a convenience store, it is going to provide uh, local employment for people. Um, the applicant himself already operates and owns another shop, um, the cost cutter in Outram Road in South Sea, um, and that has a premises license that uh, is from seven till midnight, Sunday to Thursdays, and on Friday and Saturdays, seven a.m. in the morning until two a.m. So he's a very experienced operator in dealing with exactly this sort of premises. Um, late at night uh, and would say and I respectfully submit that in relation to the concerns about what might happen late at night that's not something which he experiences at his store um, in Outram Road. It's not uh, a case that people leave local drinking establishments and then go to the off-license or convenience stores on the way home and purchase more alcohol to consume while they're making their way home. That is, I, I, I think, a bit of an urban myth as to, to what people do, do. Obviously, convenience store is just that. The premises license uh, to sell alcohol is an essential part of convenience retailing. It's about being able to go to the shops and get everything under one roof. So um, groceries, newspapers, um, tobacco, um, alcohol, etc. Um, he appreciates, obviously, being a license holder already in your area, the privilege it is to hold a premises license. And as I've said, he's had to make a substantial investment in this property. Uh, and I would respectfully suggest that that actually should give the committee some confidence that it's not going to be an operation which has any adverse effect on the licensing objectives because he knows anybody at any time can review his license and if it were granted and then taken away from him that would have a massive effect on his business so much so that in fact a convenience store probably wouldn't be able to um, operate financially. The hours, of course, that's why they're called convenience stores. It's to allow people who don't have a regular nine to five job to be able to go to the shops at a time that suits them and not necessarily suits the shopkeeper because shopkeepers, of course, would love to only have uh, a limited window of operating hours. But of course, a lot of people work uh, late into the evening and that's why the application has been for a license for 6 a.m. in the morning until um, midnight each day. Reference by um, residents has been made to a number of other um, convenience stores in the area. And of course, you know, as an experienced committee, that need is not a relevant factor. So it's not a case of um, saying, well, we've already got sufficient convenience stores, we don't need um, another one. That's not right. It's only to do with the, the licensing objectives. But having looked and asked my client, looked at the um, 
competition, for want of a better word, around the area, and certainly within a half a mile of the premises, there are a number of other convenience stores. And in fact, having looked uh, at, at the list my client provided, I then um, looked at the register online of Portsmouth City Council and the Southern Cooperative stores, so there's one at Highland Road, there's one at Winter Road, um, at Devonshire Square, those um, Southern Cooperative stores, they have licenses from 6am until midnight, um, as does the Tesco Express in Albert Road, their premises licenses also 6 until midnight. And the other convenience stores have licenses until um, 11 p.m. Now, I'm sure you will be aware, but the residents probably won't be of the Section 182 guidance issued by the Secretary of State under the Licensing Act. And I draw your attention to paragraph 10.15 of that guidance, which specifically deals with shops. And this is guidance that the government issue that local authorities are obliged to take into account. So the Licensing Act actually says each committee should take into account their own policy but also the Section 182 guidance and give equal weight to both. And paragraph 10.15 of that guidance um, says that shops should normally be free to provide sales of alcohol for off sales at any time when they're, they're open unless there's good reasons based on the licensing objectives to restrict those hours. Uh, and we say there is no um, evidence or credible evidence which would suggest the need to restrict the hours for the sale of alcohol um, outside of the opening hours, which would be six until midnight. Now, as uh, Mr Stone alluded to, there are no representations from responsible authorities and um, that is a, a significant point because again, the Section 182 guidance, which uh, Mr. Stone has referred to in your uh, papers, does say that you should attach weight um, to the views of responsible authorities. So the police in particular in relation to crime and disorder and environmental health in relation uh, to public nuisance. They haven't made any representations. Certainly we, um, had a discussion with the police and with the licensing officer regarding the hours um, before we submitted the application. So we sought their views on whether there would be any concerns if we applied for a license between six and midnight. And uh, the police um, confirmed in that pre-application advice that they wouldn't raise any concern. They wouldn't want an application to have been submitted uh, any later than midnight uh, and that's why those hours um, were chosen. In relation to the representations nothing is mentioned about the applicant or any ability for him to operate um, his shop and as I've said he's already got the Outram Road and will be putting in the same due diligence procedures into this shop so CCTV will be inside the store and um, uh, Kumar has also uh, confirmed that there would be a camera outside of the premises, uh, which would enable him to monitor the situations which have been raised, one about queuing regarding COVID and the other about whether um, homeless persons um, uh, hang around the vicinity of the, the premises. So both things which will be managed well by um, him in addition to CCTV, as you would expect, he operates a Challenge 25 procedure. His staff will all be trained. There'll be records of training. He'll have the usual um, refusal log in place uh, to prove his due diligence that staff are making appropriate um, challenges. It, it seems to me from the representations that there is a challenge to this opening up as a shop, whether it's selling alcohol or not. Um, and that, again, is is really not a relevant factor to the licensing objectives. So if you didn't grant the license, the premises is likely in any event to open up as a convenience store, um, just not one which, which can sell alcohol and it will open between six and 12. Uh, and our uh, view and respectful submission would be in relation to the number of visitors to the shop, um, it's unlikely to make much of a difference in terms of numbers coming to the shop, uh, whether the, the premises license has, 
uh, in place or not. Though we do accept because of convenience retailing, if alcohol is missing, the number of customers will certainly be um, slightly less than, than normal. But it is expected, um, Mr Kumar expects it to draw its customer base from the local residents around. It's not um, expected to be a destination store that people are going to drive to. Uh, and in any event, I would say the issues they've raised around parking would not really be a relevant consideration as to whether it should have um, a premises license or not. That's a, a planning issue as to whether it should be a shop not whether it should sell um, alcohol or not. Uh, and just in relation to the last point that uh, Ms. Staker mentioned about um, rubbish and the emergency exit, I don't believe those issues were raised in any of the representations. I don't have any instructions in relation to that, but, but Kumar may be able to um, say how he intends to store and dispose of um, his rubbish. But what I would say is neither factor, in my view, is directly linked to the licensable activities uh, that would take place at the premises and, and wouldn't, um, in my view, be relevant to your consideration. But um, I'll, I'll invite Kumar in a moment just to uh, see whether he can, can answer that point. In relation to the petition, which a few people have signed, I, I'm going to suggest to you that you should not attach a great deal of weight to it. Yes, of course, you can take it into account, but unfortunately, the person that um, arranged that petition is not present, and I would have wanted the opportunity to ask them questions, particularly how many people they asked to sign the petition who haven't signed it. Um, because obviously this is a densely residential area and with respect to the person that's arranged the petition there are not that many households who have signed it uh, and in addition to that question also about what conversations took place because my experience of people collecting petitions is that they often expand uh, upon points made that's actually set out in the, the sort of preamble to the request for their signature. Uh, and sometimes that missing information uh, can be persuasive for people to sign. And unless we're able to ask them what uh, they actually said to people and how they encouraged them to sign the petition, uh, that's why I say not much weight could be given to it. And the final point I'll, I'll make in the representation is, is, for want of repeating Mr Stone, is about the position on reviews of premises licence. It does allow a committee to apply a light touch to applications. Reviews are very quick processes, can be bought at any time by anybody, um, as long as they have credible evidence the licensing objectives are being adversely affected uh, and the matter could be back before a committee within six to eight weeks of that application being submitted. So I do ask you to apply that light touch, attach great weight to the fact responsible authorities um, haven't objected and that this is a proven responsible licensee who's already operating an off license with longer hours than he's asked for at Highland Road. So I'll finish there. Um, and Logic Kumar, are you able to explain how you will deal with the rubbish that's generated from the premises? And then uh, just deal with that for the moment. And then Ms. Staker can ask a question regarding the emergency exit, because I'm not sure what the, the issue is there at the moment. So if you could just are you able to deal with the rubbish? Yes, yes, uh, John. Yeah, the, the rubbish-wise, we normally uh, have a lot of recycling rubbish, like a cardboard and, and a polythene. So that's my wholesaler. Once he deliver the, uh, the things, and they take all the rubbish, all the recycled rubbish back in the same cages, and, and the normal waste, I would like to go for a local uh, rubbish collection for one black bag in a week. So that's that's the normal 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 rubbish, like you know, uh, so not re a recycled one like a cardboard and things. My wholesaler take them back for recycling. 
and the waste mm-hmm. waste from our side, like a counter side, like a you know normal local waste. That's I like to go for the local uh, local rubbish collection for once in a week. Yeah. And would the would your rubbish be stored in the premises until it was collected? Okay. The the cardboard. And what, do do you have any other waste other than the um, recyclable waste? Yeah, we probably have going to have one bin in behind the counter. So there's no need to have bins outside the premises. It'll be inside the premises and then collected, as you've described. That's right. Yeah, the cardboard we keep it inside, and uh, and every week, uh, once in a week, we leave the bin outside. That the day when they're collecting, so we can leave on the morning. Thank you. Um, if I leave the the representation there, and then either myself or Kumar can deal with any questions, and and obviously mistake I had a question about the emergency exit, which I can't deal with until I know what the issue is. Thank you, councillors. Okay, thank you. It'll be councillors' questions first, and we'll go through. Uh, Councillor Mason, you're going to take them to me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, first, God, I'll. And ask both questions at the same time and can get the answer. On one page 162, it mentions there's no soundproofing between the shop and the flat above. Is that something that is planned to be done during the works? Also, on the plan appendix B on page 157, um, I can't see any storage areas. So I think that's what the question was about. Um, everything, I don't know if there is storage, it's just not on the plans that we've been given. So. Mr. Walsgrove? Um, in relation to the plan, that, that's right. There's, there's, It's the shop and the counter, uh, and you've heard from Kumar that the waste is, is reasonably minimal and that will be kept behind the, the counter until collected. Um, the other point was about soundproofing. Um, I'm not sure there will be any need to have soundproof works for a retail premises for people just coming into shop because the level of the noise is not going to be such to disturb the upstairs premises um, of course if it were and I, I'm saying it won't but but if it were environmental health of course have sufficient powers under the Environmental Protection Act to deal with the issue of noise uh, nuisance from the business to the residential properties uh, and that would be the most appropriate way to deal with this premises because as I said whether you grant the license or not it will be a shop so the issue of whether there's a noise transference from a commercial property upstairs um, is an issue which should be dealt with under the Environmental Protection Act. What I'm not sure about was what the premises was before. I don't know whether Kumar you know what business operated there before it closed down because of course they would have had people coming and going just as a shop would do, Kumar do you know what business it was before it closed oh. yeah I, I, I think the the nail shop used to be a nail shop a nail bar nail bar yeah, so, so. yeah. it was a beauty shop it was a beauty shop so it was, yeah yeah thank you um <laughs> Uh, ben Atrell, you had your hand up. Well, I think John's all answered it. Yes, that's right. Um, I was just going to address the point to say that the actual licensable activity, which is the sale of alcohol, is unlikely to add any significant noise to what would ordinarily be entirely be permissible anyway in terms of a convenience store. But um, Mr. Walsgrove did, did go on to, to deal with that. So thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, did you have any further questions, Councillor Mason? No, uh, Councillor Madden, questions? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I've got a, a question um, from Mr. Kumar, but, but one to Mr. Walsall first. Um, I'll just take a note, that's all right. I may have got it wrong. But when before you put the application in, you I'm, I'm not sure whether you verbally spoke with the police and uh, licensing or whether you had a meeting with them or not. Um, but the only thing that the police asked well, they may have objected to was if there was the license, the liquor license or the alcohol license was extended beyond midnight. Is that correct? You actually had meetings with them. 
Uh, I had email correspondence and a telephone call. Thank you. Could I ask Mr. Kumar about you, you? You have another premise. We were told another in in Uttram Road. I think you said, Mr. Walsgrove. I can't remember. I, I can't read my own writing. Can you tell us one how long you've had that those premises? And I, I'm, I'm assuming. I think I'm down convenience store. And secondly, whether you have any complaints about any of the activities there in or or outside the building. Oh, sorry, say that again. The first question. The first question is how long have we been running that business? Uh, we are from 2015 December. Okay, about five years, yeah? Five years plus, yeah. And have you had any complaints from anybody about the weekend either inside the building or outside the building? Rubbish or whatever I mean. Uh, we, uh, we had issues like uh, uh, on the first uh, couple of years because because this is new for us the area so we used to know the customers and things uh, then once uh, once after two years then we we all under control like we know we haven't had any much issues but uh, yeah no really we haven't had any much issues and we uh, the police uh, local police they come and uh, ask us for the support and the camera. We have outside CCTV camera for if any incident happen outside. So we, we you know we record the clips and they give it to them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I should, uh, thank you. Thank you. Can I can I just add to that point? Uh, Kumar doesn't mean an incidents at his premises outside. It's incidents from people walking home from other establishments that they're doing things they shouldn't be doing, and his camera sometimes picks that up. Cool. Uh, okay. I guess I'll ask the question then. Um, uh, Mr. Walsgrove, and it might be from Mr. Kumar as well, you mentioned that you're hoping to open the property within six to eight weeks. I was, I know it's no bearing on the license, but I was checking the planning portal for the for the shop and it's currently under a sui generis. Um, as far as I'm aware, it needs to convert to, uh, it's more of a class E because they're changing the planning things. Is this, is or an A1 at least, is this, is this not happening or is it happening? Could you explain it to me, please? Uh, my understanding is that it's permitted development, so it can um, change to an A1 retail use without the need for a planning application. But would it have to submit the application in order to say it's permitted development so the council are aware that it is changing? No, the um, planning laws have changed and there are certain classes that you can change the business premises to without the need of any planning application. So, for example, it's just um, off the premises. That was all. Sorry, I didn't know. You know it. So, I, I, I've done, you know, applications where pubs have been converted to shops, and you're allowed to go from A3 and A4 use to A1 use without an application to the local authority. It's it's permitted in development, which means it's granted by statute. Okay, thank thank you for clearing that up for me because obviously I did look on the planning portal and it did throw me a little bit. Um, uh, I would address uh, the deputation over the rubbish, but like you said, it would be covered under uh, under the environmental health. Um, Mr. Kumar brought up a point saying that he'd, he'd swap his cardboard with his suppliers, but he'd have a one bag of rubbish a week outside his premises. Would, would um, uh, Is he allowed to do that? No, this is from the local uh, rubbish collection people. Once in a week, they collect, we pay for the commercial. Oh. Yeah, from, from what you said, I thought you were just waiting for, for the city delivery, not, not commercial waste. That's fine. That's clear. So pay for the commercial waste. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank um, Any other questions, councillors? No. Um, Mrs. Staker, uh, do you have any questions of the applicant or his solicitor? Um. Yes, I do. First of all, I'd like to say that um, the reason why the other two people that recently sent you emails are not re are not um, attending today is, um, unfortunately, Brenda is no good with technology, so she just can't do it. If I was at home, um, she would have come online with me. Unfortunately, I'm on holiday, 
Um, so you. that's how I'm doing it. That's how I'm doing it. The other local resident, um, she's actually um, at nursery this afternoon with her young son, which brings me on to say that this is a residential area. There's a, a brand new tenant which is now moved in. I need, I need because, questions. You can speak yeah, in a minute. Um, I just need a question oh, first, and then you can say what you want in two minutes' time. I just need questions okay. if you've got them with the applicant. Sorry. Right. Okay. Sorry. That's um, all right. Questions to the. Um, as far as the rubbish is concerned, um, if it's kept in, in, in his premises, there's no problem at all. It's a problem if it's outside. It's a, if it was outside, it would be a, um, a fire risk. It um, immediately backs onto our premises. There is no way he can, if, if a fire takes place, they can't get out of the premises and go anywhere. Okay. I, I think, that, I think so that's acknowledged. And... and my client said that that won't happen so just to give you that reassurance what that there won't be a fire or the rubbish won't there be stored out there there won't be rubbish outside okay that's fine then i haven't got a problem with that um soundproofing i have a big problem with um um i do have a big problem even when you open the front door of the shop whichever sh whatever it would be we can hear it upstairs well it's upstairs our front room is above the shop. Our kitchen is adjacent to the shop. So we can hear you. We, we need a question. <laughs> is it a question? Um, you uh, a question. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I don't have any you questions. Don't, so you don't have any questions. Right. Two seconds. Right. We'll come straight back to you. I just got to do the talking and then you can, you can, you can do your okay. representation. I do apologize. Thank you. Two seconds. Sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, Derek Stone, do you have any questions of the applicant at all? No, I'm saying that was a no. Are you right there, Ben? <laughs> Sorry, I can see everyone on the screen, that's why. Um, I can't hear Derek, have he's, have he's disappeared? I, I'm here, oh. I have no questions. Wicked, thank you. Um, we'll now move on to the representations. Um, uh, Dawn, you can bring up your representation now. So basically, <laughs> there are some rules. Um, you have to cover what you've covered in your own deputation that you've written. And you've written, uh, you, I've got your email up now. It's a, obviously it's a lengthy deputation. You can't stray away from what you've the main points that you've made, but you can elaborate on those points during it. So um, if you do get carried away, I'll, I will stop you. But um, you have unlimited time and. Um, and then we can ask questions after that. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have lived there for almost a year. We've lived at, uh, above and beside the shop for almost a year, which has been empty. Um, fully aware that it will be a shop. Be um, I can't tell you, but it was, <laughs> it, it was almost going back to be a beauty shop before COVID. Okay. Um, what was in my email? It was a long time ago. Um <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a residential area. There are young children um, to each side, um, each side. So all I'm saying to you is, it is, it's all young, very young families around there. Um, I've been told that parking is not an issue. You obviously don't know the area very well because it's a horrendous problem parking there. Um, mm -hmm. If anyone should stop outside. Well, they won't be able to for most of the, for most of the day. Um, what else was in my email? Sorry, I haven't got it with me. I'm a, I'm away. I'm not at home. Um, no, I'll, I'll, if, um, if you say so, I've got it open. So if you say something wildly different to what oh, you said, I'll just, you. I'll just say that you, it's not in your email. It's fine. Everything you've right. brought up is in your email. Okay, dokie. Um, we've done the fire. Done the rubbish. Um, residential area. The opening from 6 a.m. until, until uh, 12 a.m. It is gonna. It will generate people to go and in, into the shop at that time, uh, well, any time of the day. 18 hours for a shop to be open in a residential area. That's a, that's quite something. Well, I think anyway. But then I've never lived. I've never lived next to a convenience store. Um, I don't know what I, I I've put all my views in a in the emails email that you have seen and for the local people that that live around there. Um, 
we, we are not we're not happy about it being a convenience store. I'm quite happy for it to be anything else, to be quite honest, apart from a shop that opens 18 hours a day with young families around and everything else that can attract it with a with a pro, with a um, a business that has a alcohol license for that time. There's, there's nothing else I can say. There's nothing else I can say. No, th thank you for um, taking time out of your holiday to come to the speaking today. On on the back of that, I do have a question myself for the, for, for John Warsgrove and the applicant. Um, when you mentioned other premises in the area were open from uh, from six to midnight for booze, all those area all those shops actually shut at eleven o'clock or open yes. later than six. Oh, this is for, I'm going to ask this of John. Um, does the applicant have an opening schedule that he's willing to abide to? Like, is it is it going to be 7 to 11, or is he going to open 6 a.m. to 12 a.m.? It, it will be open 6 till 12. Thank you. Uh, so, um, members, do you have any questions uh, for Mrs. Staker? No. no, I don't. No, I don't have any any further questions. No. Oh no, I was going to ask if anyone wanted to ask you a oh. question. At this point. <laughs> oh, Honestly, it's fine. I remember my first licensing meeting. Um, uh, Mr. Walsgrove, do you have any questions for the for the representation? No, thank you, Chair. Okay, Derek Stone, do you have any questions? No, I have no questions. Okay, thank you. Um, at this point, um, if everyone is satisfied we shall move to summing up and we will start um, start with you Dawn um, you don't have to sum up if you don't want to because you did make your points quite quite clear at yeah. this point but this is the last time you'll be able to speak at this meeting no, so if you needed I to have something yeah. out do it right now right um, I don't have anything else to say mm -hmm. sorry I don't have anything else to say that's fine thank you thank you um, no, thank you for your time today. Um, Mr Stone, uh, would you like to sum up? No, nothing further to thank you. Thank you. Um, Dawn Staker. Oh, she's just gone. Is she's now gone. exiting. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, Mr Walsgrove, do you have anything to add? To sum um, up? Just wondering whether we, we should wait to see if she dials in or should we just... Finish. I, she assumed it was over because I said it was the last opportunity that she had to speak. Do you know what I mean? And that she yeah. Went back. Yeah. Okay. Um, ben. Ben. <laughs> I, I think in which case, as she's not here, she did I'm say not, that she, she she said everything that she wanted to say. Yeah. I, I'm I'm not going to sum up because then there, there can be no question that anything else was said. So I, I I'll not sum up. Okay. Ben, are you um, happy with that? Yeah. Yeah, fair, fair enough. It's up to you, Chair, whether you want to just wait a minute or two just to make sure it wasn't unintentional. But I think it's likely that what you say is true, that she gained the impression that that was it. Um, Bless her, honestly. Yeah. I'm like charged with this kind of situation. That you, people don't really come across this situation. So when you're thrown into a meeting, you're kind of you're like, what is going on? And obviously, she's might have been slightly overwhelming and it is overwhelming in a licensing meeting especially if you're doing it over your phone you're on holiday and we're doing it absolutely. virtually absolutely um, so yeah it's up, it's up to you Chair whether you want to just wait a minute or if you're happy to just carry on um, that I'm, it's I'm, entirely up to you um, I'm happy to oh yes, sorry I had a message come through yes, oh it's Joanne was messaging Piers in the pocket. Uh, so uh, I'm happy to carry on because I don't think she's coming back. Would members agree with that? Yeah. Uh, so are you choosing not to sum up Mr. Warsgrove, but you did make your points? I, I am because then she hasn't missed anything. That's fine. That's really, I really appreciate that as well. Thank you uh, very much. I will finish my scripts. So now uh, we've summed up, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for their time today and that concludes the formal part of our meeting for this application. Members of the committee along with the legal advisor will now meet with the members to undertake their deliberations and make their decision. The decision will be sent in writing to all parties as soon as possible. 
So thank you for attending today. Um, can we just take five minutes? Because my husband's just come through the door and I haven't seen him and he's just got the kids. So I just want to speak to him for five seconds before he disappears again. So just five minutes and I'll meet you on the, the exempt stream. Thank you. Yeah. See you again soon. Thanks Bye -bye. very much. See ya. Bye. -bye.